So the purpose of this video is to teach a study technique called interleaved practice. Now most students, whether they know it or not, use a much less effective study technique called blocked practice. And chances are, you have been using blocked practice your whole life, and I am here to change that. Hi, I'm Katie Azevedo from SchoolHabits.com and I'm a private executive function coach who teaches students and professionals strategies to learn and work better. If this video provides value to you, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Stuff like that makes all the difference in the world, so thank you. And if you want more tips and tricks about school and productivity and time management and all that stuff, then follow me over on Instagram for daily doses of all of that. Now, let's get started. So blocked practice is when a student uses one particular skill in isolation on a series of questions or similar problems over and over again that require that one particular skill to solve. So for example, in math, this is what blocked practice could look like. Now remember, blocked practice is the study technique that we want to move away from. There's a time and place for that, which I will explain in this video, but it is by far so less superior than interleaved practice, okay? So in math, an example of blocked practice could be that a student is learning the Pythagorean theorem and they are given, I don't know, 20 practice questions to solve that all require the Pythagorean theorem to solve. So yes, these 20 questions is going to help you learn how to use the Pythagorean theorem. That's great. But this type of blocked practice will not teach you when to use the Pythagorean theorem. And I'm going to come back to that. In English, this is what blocked practice could look like. So let's say you are learning something like subject verb agreement because you're studying for the SAT and the ACT and that's a grammar error you need to know. Okay, so again, you might be given 20 sentences all that contain a subject verb agreement error and you're told okay use your knowledge of the subject verb agreement rule to correct these sentences you could do that because you know all of the sentences actually contain subject verb agreement errors and you know exactly what strategy to use to solve all 20 of those questions again there's a place and time for this type of learning so blocked practice it's helpful and effective for learning how to use a particular strategy, but it is completely useless for learning when to use a particular strategy. Now the issue lies in the fact that the majority of midterms and final exams and things like ACT and SAT and AP, AP exams, all of those require you to know which strategy to use when to use it, and then of course, how to use it. Now that previous concept that I just said is super important, so I'm going to repeat it. The majority of tests and exams require you to not only know how to use a strategy, but when to use it. And that is why you need interleaved practice. So interleaved practice is when you deliberately study a variety of question types that all require different strategies to solve. And these questions all appear in a random order so that you don't go into it knowing what strategy you need to use. The critical point here is that you are learning when to use a strategy and not just how to. Now there was a 2014 study published in the Journal of Educational Psychology that not only was interleaved practice better as a study method than blocked practice, but also, and I'm quoting this, it provided near immunity to forgetting. Dude, that's amazing. This is a study technique that provides near immunity to forgetting. That's bonkers. Like if that's not enough to convince you to use interleaved practice over blocked practice, then like, Peace out, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> All right, so let me walk you through what interleaved practice could look like in two different scenarios. I'm gonna use math and English. And then of course, you can adapt these steps into whatever subject that you need to study for. So in math, interleaved practice could look like the following. Let's say for a test, you need to know the Pythagorean theorem, the distance formula, and the quadratic reciprocity theorem. Now you might be thinking, what the heck are those? Listen, just for the sake of me explaining this strategy, you don't have to know what those are. Bear with me. So first, you should know how to use each of these formulas. You should know what they are and how to use them. And you can get to that point by using blocked practice, for sure. So again, you would look at you know 10 or 20 problem sets where you need to use the Pythagorean theorem, 
or where you need to use the distance formula so that you can get acquainted with how to do so. But then the real learning happens when you take all of these questions and you scramble them and you don't know which strategy you're supposed to use and you sit there and you require your brain to process, okay, what type of question is this? What strategy do I need to use? Now to do this, you can make your own quizzes. I have a whole video on how to make your own quizzes. I will put that in the description box below. And no, I'm not talking about like Quizlet. Quizlet is a, a tool to make your own quizzes. You can do that. That's perfectly fine. In this video, I talk about like the method for making your own quizzes how to know what questions go on there, where to get your questions for quizzes, okay? And if you wanna do it with Quizlet, that's fine. But I'm not getting like tool specific, it's more of a strategy video. And like I said, I'll leave that in the description box below. So in English, moving to a different subject, interleaved practice could look like the following. So let's say you need to know subject verb agreement, noun pronoun agreement, and dangling modifiers. Again, if you don't know what these things are, that's okay. You can still follow along just to understand how to use this study technique. So first, you should know what each of these grammar errors are. You should know the actual grammar rules about how to you know, match a verb to the subject, how to find the subject, what the heck is a dangling modifier, how to fix them. And again, you can use blocked practice to learn these rules in isolation. But the real learning happens when you take, let's say 50 different questions with all of these errors in them scrambled and then maybe even some questions with no errors in them at all, okay? And you require yourself to look at a sentence and say, is there an error here? And if so, which one is it? And do I know which strategy to use to solve this question? That is interleaved practice. Now, knowing how to use this study technique in a variety of subjects, of course, I just gave you math and English, but if you need it for science, okay, you can do the same thing. It is basically a superpower. This method works amazingly well for things like unit tests, midterms, final exams, um, licensure tests, um, you know, for like your career, and definitely standardized testing. Because all of these assessments require you to look at a question, figure out what it's asking, and then determine the correct strategy to use all before you even solve the question. Now, if you have questions on how to use this study technique in your particular scenario or for a different subject than when I go over here, definitely leave those in the comments below. I will try to get to as many questions as possible. And of course, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, hit that notification bell. And as always, thank you so much for watching.